Hello, it's Cole Anderson here, the independent pianist. Welcome back to my channel. Today we have a gem by a little-known 18th century Italian composer, uh, Muzio Clementi. Nowadays, Muzio Clementi is almost entirely known for his pedagogical works, mostly for his series of six sonatinas, Opus 36, which most beginner students play at some point or other. And they're actually wonderful little sonatinas, great for students. I use them with my students all the time. Uh, they're really wonderful, but it's unfortunate that his place in history as not only a great composer, but also one of the foremost virtuosi of his day, has been unfortunately overshadowed by his near contemporaries like Beethoven, Mozart, and Haydn. And this might partly be due to the pianistic duel that Clementi engaged in with Mozart at the court of Emperor Joseph II in Vienna in 1781. Uh, apparently this contest was judged as a draw by those who witnessed it, and Clementi went away very moved by the impression that Mozart's playing made on him. He made it his goal thereafter to seek after a true singing sound on the piano. Mozart, unfortunately, was not so generous. In a letter to his father, immediately afterward, he called Clementi a charlatan, like all Italians, was the phrase he used, and enjoined his sister Nannerl, who was, of course, an extremely gifted pianist, not to practice Clementi's sonatas too much, as his passages in double notes would ruin her fine and even touch. So it's unfortunate that history kind of just took Mozart at his word here. I mean, this was probably just jealousy on Mozart's part. He may have felt intimidated by Clementi's technical prowess. I don't think he'd ever run into anyone who was quite that skilled, who was actually able to kind of match him at his own game as a pianist. And indeed, Clementi was one of the foremost composers who contributed to the development of the piano technique of the 19th century, much more so than Mozart himself, in fact. I mean, it's only really a step from Clementi to Beethoven to Hummel to Weber, Chopin, Liszt, and so forth. Even though Mozart was a great pianist and a great virtuoso, his works are a little bit more conservative in their treatment of the piano itself. They're not quite so groundbreaking as a Beethoven or Clementi or so forth. Anyway, it's high time we started appreciating Clementi's music. And as a bonus, I'm actually going to do a double upload this week. So I'm also going to upload a kind of live-ish recording that I did of the F-sharp minor sonata, opus 25, number 5. And the last movement of that sonata was one that Clementi played in his duel with Mozart. It has a passage in tricky double thirds that probably was kind of intimidating to Mozart. Uh, and you might have seen this video before. I uploaded it on a different channel a few years back. Um, before I was really serious about the whole YouTube thing, so I thought I'd just upload it on this channel as well, so you can see it. It's, uh, I only did it in one take, so it's not quite as perfect as I might like, but I think it came out, it came out alright, and that way you'll get to see another side of Clementi. He had a very highly varied output. So that piece, the F-sharp minor sonata, has a very different atmosphere from this one. It's very brooding, uh, elegiac, very powerful and moving work with a furiously passionate finale. Uh, in other pieces, like his G minor sonata, Opus 34, number 2, he directly anticipated some of Beethoven's structural procedures. So there's a famous part in the first movement of the Pathetique sonata by Beethoven, where he brings back the slow introduction before the development and before the coda, and Clementi actually did this first in his G minor sonata. So uh, Clementi was a very important composer, and he was integral in the development of the 19th century piano sound, and also to the development of the so-called cyclic forms that were so often used by Schubert and Liszt, Franck, and so many others. A work like the Pathetique Sonata is usually seen as being one of the first steps in that direction. Anyway, the two-movement sonata in this video, on the other hand, shows Clementi in his best comedic style. It's like an opera buffa. That's lovely, warm, playful, sunny. It's also a great example of Clementi's superb craftsmanship. So in the first movement, there is a collection of motives that make up the first theme, and these motives are expanded and developed to create the second theme and the closing material. And I hasten to add, this was very typical of the great classical period composers like Beethoven, Haydn, and Mozart, the three we usually talk about all the time. Everything is tied together motivically very closely, which gives the music this kind of incredible richness and a harmonious kind of feeling in its structure, an organic quality. One thing just seems to lead naturally to the next. 
So there's already a highly developmental approach just in the exposition of the first movement before he even reaches the development section. In the delightful second movement, Clementi invokes some counterpoint. There's a canon in the main theme, uh, basically just like a round. It's very simple, but it's also very cleverly executed. And again, everything develops out of the intervals of the first theme. So it starts with a half step, which is then taken uh, separately from that theme and developed in various places. There's no slow movement in this sonata. It's all fun and games. And especially the second movement requires a high degree of virtuosity. I was lucky to get through it relatively unscathed in this recording, but it's very tricky. Also a note on the edition that I'm using, because you might be wondering why I'm using this kind of old ratty looking edition. Uh, it's actually taken from the original edition published in Vienna by Artaria. Uh, the original editions for many of Clementi's 50 or 60 so sonatas are very happily available through the International Music Score Library Project, IMSLP for short, and it's much better to use them than the various editions you tend to find of collected sonatas by Clementi published by Shermer and Kalmus and whatnot. These editions almost always have editorial emendations and many mistakes, so I don't know of a good scholarly complete Clementi sonata edition out there. If there is one, please be sure to comment and let me know, but for now, if you're wanting to study these sonatas, I really recommend just using the original editions that are on IMSLP. It's really your best bet. There are still some little mistakes there, but uh, it's far better than the modern editions by Shermer and so forth. So I hope you enjoy this little treat. Uh, in my life right now, I'm actually incredibly busy right now. I'm playing two concerts over this coming weekend. Um, I'm playing Ernst Bloch's 1919 Suite for viola and piano, as well as Beethoven's fourth cello sonata. Uh, those are very tricky pieces. I've had to be kind of been working on them a lot, and then I have more repertoire coming up in the week after that. So it's been taking up some of my time for larger projects. But I have some more ambitious projects that I want to do over the summer. I'm hoping to have some time to kind of contemplate and focus on my solo playing this summer. So hopefully we'll get some good things from that. And as usual, if you can, please do consider supporting the channel. Uh, any kind of financial support helps me to keep bringing you this content. You can do that through my Patreon account, www.patreon.com forward slash independent pianist. Or I also have a link in the description box to my PayPal account. You can make one-time donations through PayPal as well. Every time you donate, that's going to help me just to keep bringing you this content, keep putting my effort into analyzing and performing this great music and bringing it to you, which I love to do, and I'm hoping to make it really financially viable. So thank you to all my current supporters, and if you can't support, please just like the video, subscribe, comment, that helps me uh, measurably as well. So until next time, this is Cole Anderson, signing off.